So one advantage of WolfQuest 3 taking so long to develop is that new tools come along that we can take advantage of to make the game uh, even better. Here we've got the wolf with uh, the fur shader that I showed about a year ago, but recently we got a hold of another, an even newer shader, and it's pretty amazing. So here's the basic shader applied to the wolf. Obviously, it needs a little bit of work, but already you can see the fur effect just looks better. It's a similar technical method of rendering fur, but um, it just takes it an extra mile or two or... Let's take a look at this. So this first shader, it's called X-Fur, um, and it's made by an amazing Unity programmer, Jorge Pinal Negrete in Mexico, um, and we got a hold of it recently to uh, start seeing what we could do with it with the wolf. Here we can see the, the painting tools that it comes with, so you can really get in there and modify how it looks. So the most basic thing here, let's just zoom in here a little bit. Um, can rotate it around so uh, we can we can shave or remove fur so it starts just with a default amount of fur we can strip it down to just the bare texture underneath and then paint it on so uh, it's already got a good coat of fur there so now we can do other things like trim it like here obviously around the face you don't want nearly as much fur so check this out whoa where'd it go here we go just trim it right down we can trim it down to uh, be quite short around the face. I'm gonna increase the strength on that and really get it down right around the eyes so it's just, um, just minimal fur. Let's trim down the ear stuff there too. Look at that, it's so much fun just to mess around with. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here that needs extra work but you get the basic idea. Even though that's about as short as the fur can get, it doesn't look quite right. There's too much shadowing there. That's called occlusion. Maybe you remember from the grass video about how important occlusion was to create that sense of depth and three-dimensionality. And here it's really good because um, it does that for the fur, but when the fur is so short as it is on the face, we don't want that kind of a sense of depth so much. So another amazing tool that this does is, um, here it's called uh, the shadowing tool. It's it's a that's the friendlier word for occlusion. So we can increase it. It's already pretty high. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm just left clicking and right clicking here to increase or decrease whatever the, the the tool is doing. So look at that. We can we can remove all occlusion there if we want. That's a little, a little extreme. So we want to add a little bit. I'll adjust these sliders a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So you can tell it's fur, um, but it doesn't have that great density so we can just keep tweaking this until it's just how we want to do don't worry about the the hairy mouth there that's not going to be in the game so the occlusion control here the shadowing is an amazing fine-tuning control that really lets you get um, an accurate appearance but there's one more tool this has that's amazing here is You've probably seen it here at the comb. You can actually groom the fur so it doesn't just stick out straight away from the body, but you can actually brush it to follow the contours of the body. So look at that. So like on the legs, brushing it down. On the neck, brushing it back. Brushing it back on the back as well. On the chest, you can, you can brush it down. So I'm just doing this kind of roughly here to give you an idea. But there you can really see how that makes a difference. There we go. So this fur is who I've worked over more. There's still a few weird things like the a few things sticking up here and there. But so any of these fur shaders let you adjust the length of the of the fur. Um, and as we saw in the video I made last year, you can go too far. I, that's too far, don't you think? Um, you can bring it down to nothing. But there's a range in the middle where you know it looks like fur. Um, and I think this fur shader is probably good enough that we could actually have uh, longer coats in the winter and shorter coats in the summer and just add a little extra touch of realism to the wolf. But x has one more amazing feature. This one just blew my mind. All right, I'm gonna, are you ready for it? Here we go. Imagine a nice uh, late fall snowstorm on Amethyst Mountain and your wolf gets all snowy. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And it depends on the wind direction. If the wind's blowing one side, it'll accumulate on that side more. When the snow stops, it'll melt. So what makes this even more exciting working with Jorge is that back in the day, he played the original Wolf Quest. So when we uh, 
contacted him about this amazing shader, he was um, he was very interested to hear that we were working on the new version of WolfQuest. So we consider him a real partner, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing this to WolfQuest 3 um, for yet another little bit of immersion and realism in the game.